TV. Sponsored by A Taste of Cypress, Chesham. Now doing deliveries. So we're here at KA Barbers in Belvedere. Welcome to Boom Air TV. We've got Ted Cheeseman, Ted Cheeseman ex British title holder. Um, good to have you on the show, man. Good yeah. to have you on the channel. Um, obviously, you might know Ted from his fight he had last with. Scott Fitzgerald, yeah, Scott Fitzgerald. And I thought you won that fight. I really thought you won that fight. A lot of people did think you won that fight. Yeah. Um, also, I don't think you're going to talk about that, do you? No. I'm going to go on all that, all, all that boxing politics bullshit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, let's go straight into it. You've got um, you've got a big fight coming up, Sam, uh, Sam Egerton. Yeah. The first, I've got to say this, the first of its kind behind closed doors are in, 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 this, in this country, in the world, I think. Now, there's a couple that's gone on, but obviously this is the first big one on Sky Live and Sky. It's the first big it's one. It's going to be history, isn't it? Part of history. You're making history. Yeah. You're making history. Um, have you prepared, I mean, for, for, for something like this? How, how do you prepare for a fight with no fans? I think it's just a fight of mentality. Obviously, it, it, if you turn up to the gym on the weekday for sparring and they told you it's a fight, yeah. you'd be trying to take the other person out, wouldn't you? So, you just got to do it whether there's a crowd or not. The, the goal is to win. and. Yeah. And it don't matter how you do that, so as long as I get the win on the night, I don't care who's there or, or what's going on, I just want to make sure I win. Yeah, is, it, is there a belt on the line for this one? Yeah, the IBF International. IBF International, ooh! That looked nice in the metal piece. Yeah, yeah. No. That looked very really nice. And, it, and um, obviously, Sam's ranked number five in the IBF world ranking, so obviously when I win, I'll take that ranking, I think. Take that ranking, man. Take that ranking. Take that ranking of him. <laughs> take that ranking. <laughs> but yeah, man, like, um, um, so, uh, what, 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 other fight, fight, what other fighters are in your class that um, you, 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 you'd, you'd like to fight? Um, you got Andy Fowler? Yeah, there's obviously the rematch with Scott, uh, yeah. Andy Fowler. Yeah, you've got to have that rematch, mate. Yeah. Do you know what? You've got to have that rematch because the fact of the matter is, man, you know, mate, mate, you, 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 you done him, mate. You, yeah. you, you beat him, mate. You beat yeah. him. And I don't know what was going on, but you know what? As I said, you don't get into that. But um, yeah, man, you've got to rematch him. Do you know what I mean? He's got your belt. He's got your British title belt. Yeah. You've got to get that back, man. Do you know what I mean? And just next time, you can get in the, what's the game plan? You're knocking man? Just obviously, yeah, try and try and leave it up to the judges. Yeah. But well, obviously, look, there's a lot of massive fights in the domestic scene at Super Bowl away. And the main, the main objective at the moment is, is beating Sam on the 1st of August. And yeah. once I've done that, I think there'll be a lot of big opportunities to come. Wicked, 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 wicked. So listen, man, so look, we're going to go a little bit off off track here, yeah. uh, off, the, off the boxing. Um, and I can, it's something that I read about you, and I can relate to this myself. Um, I read about your, 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 your gambling addiction. Um, it's something that I've gone through myself. Um, I had a, problem, a big gambling problem. Um, the money that I went into to stay Big Brother, I I I I I I threw that away on gambling. Yeah. Um, I was on Judge Rinder. Give me about me getting kicked out of a flat. So all this sort of stuff. And I wish that I had the guts to, at the time to, to talk about it and, and address it. And and do you know what? And 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 I read about you and you had the bollocks. That takes bollocks, man. To to just talk about it and 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 I think that that's. That's part of the problem, isn't it? It's like yeah, people don't talk about this sort of stuff. So actually realising it is a problem and admitting that it's a problem yeah. is one of the main biggest things. Once you do that, you will hopefully there'll be the right people around you to give you the support to yeah. help you get out of that situation. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what happened with me. As soon as I admitted it, I then was given a route to get out of it and I, I, I took that route and I'm, I'm pushing on my life in all directions that's good at the moment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I can see you know, you've got a good family set up around your house and uh, you've got lovely little kids and stuff and, uh, you know, you've got a good family life. Um, so basically, I mean, I mean, how do you how do you feel that we can stop this, this epidemic? Because it is an epidemic, right? Um, obviously, like, look, listen, there's kids as young as 12 years old who are in, in schools and they're gambling. Yeah. They've got accounts now yeah. and stuff. And the, the thing about it is, and, and people forget, people try, try to pretend it doesn't go on. Yeah. They pretend it doesn't go on now. Of course it goes on. Cool. The thing, thing to the matter is right here, yeah. alcohol yeah. and drugs, you can tell if they're addicted right here. Yeah. But gambling, you can't. Yeah. And there's no limit to what you can gamble. Yeah. You can do everything in the afternoon. Yeah. And like, how do you think, how do you think that we can combat this? Because yeah. there's a lot of suicides, man. Yeah, obviously I think, 
if um, schools made it a curriculum, sort of, at schools, community centres, trouble, trouble centres for uh, kids in trouble centre schools, um, they, they all made it a curriculum that once a month or twice a month, um, people like us come in and spoke and, and, and told them that our situation, what we've been through, what we've done, and obviously let them sort of understand and prevent it happening with them before it actually happens, like, before they get to that stage. And obviously it's going to be very few of them, it don't obviously happen to everyone, but if it's, if it's five in, in, in a hundred, if you can prevent them five in a hundred and make it go down to say one in a hundred, there's a lot less people getting addictions. And obviously, like you said, it's always better to pre prevent than cure. Prevention is always better than cure. Yeah. Do you know what? It's not worth showing the, showing the, 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 the barn door after the horses run off. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, look, they got sex education in schools. Yeah. And, they, and obviously, uh, they, they're doing that before they're 16. Yeah. So basically, they should do the same for gambling. Because yeah. you know what? Honestly, right, yeah? Gambling leads to mental illness. It leads to depression. It leads to anxiety. Yeah. And all this sort of stuff. And like, suicide is a big, is a big thing for like, for, 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 for male men in this country. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of that could be attributed to gambling, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a taboo subject, no one talks about it. Yeah. And everyone, like, I think that everyone's scared to talk about it in, in public because they're scared to death they're not going to get that that, that gambling um, um, yeah. um, company deal. Yeah. And they're they're not going to get sponsored. Yeah. Maybe tarnished. Yeah. Look, listen, I'm, I'm not uh, a hypocrite. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not against gambling. I just don't think it don't work for me. So I'm not telling other people not to gamble. You're not here preaching. Yeah, I'm not preaching telling yeah. you don't no one to gamble, no one to gamble. Yeah. You can gamble in a controlled environment. Like you, you, you can control the gamble. You lose your money. That's fine. It ain't affecting your life. You're paying your bills. You're doing everything. And gamble. Obviously, if you enjoy something, do that. But like if you drink and you can do it where it's not affecting your life, do that. But. If you gamble, you drink, or you do whatever you do, and it's making your life physical out of control, then you need help and you need support, and obviously you shouldn't be doing it. And I think if people can go and get that support barrier earlier, then it will help prevent as many people. Like I went to a sports academy as a secondary school, it's like an like all boys school sporting academy, with like a lot of kids who are good at football, judo tennis, cricket, whatever sport you name, foot, uh, name it, they had uh, athletes at all different sports. And there's like Reese Nelson went to my school. Yeah? So say like someone like Reese Nelson. Yeah. Arsenal, like, Arsenal. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, say like Big up some, Nelson. Yeah, someone like him comes out of school 16, gets a professional contract. All of a sudden they're on 40, 50 grand a week. Yeah. They're on more than what their mum and dad are yeah. both in a year and a week. So they need to be able to be financially advised from a young age and told about investments, told about um, savings, told about, uh, taught about um, controlling addictions before they get that money, have the problem, and then have to be cured. They should have had, had, had it prevented while they were at school, while they were learning. Everyone in school was getting taught to go to university, go be a banker, go be a doctor. But obviously all these are all high income um, earning jobs, mm. even if they're low income, if you're, you, you're getting a gyro each week and you're only getting hundred pound a week or something, if you're getting a million pound or hundred pound, if you spend all your money before you cover your bills you need to cover, it's affecting you, you've got a problem mm. and it don't matter how much money you've got, you could have a fire mark and someone would have a million but you both got the same problem because you both go into the, your, it's caused your problem, mm. you know what I mean? So. It's just, it's the same person who had the father who had that problem, had a million pound, they show you how to spend that million pound the same way the person who had a million if they had the father will show you. So it's just obviously what you can actually get your hands over. And as a gambler, you'll lie, you'll steal, you'll cheat um, at people out of stuff to get get things, cheat people out of bets if you could bet, if you could cheat people out of bets. No matter what you do, you do to be able to feed your habit. And of course. If you can get that control, like I was saying earlier, like if when you go to bookies, there wasn't just a number about speaking to someone about gambling. There was a leaflet, like a load of leaflets that people would take to then go to a gambling meeting. Even if they're not addicts, they might be able to go to a gambling meeting and speak, listen to people speak and think, I don't relate to them, I'm not an addict. Or there might be one person out who goes there and goes, 
to the meter, so it's quite a relate to all them, I must be an addict, then they can realise they're an addict. But well, until you go there, you will never know. But would you go to would you go to um, a publican of a of a pub to ask them about advice from drinking? No. So why would you go to a, a, a bookies and ask them advice about gambling? Yeah, no, no. So I don't understand. Like, yeah. why is it up to the why is it why is it the get the, the, the bookies who are giving the, uh, these this stuff? Why doesn't the government do the other schemes? Yeah. One the, this is me, if you're an alcoholic or you're a, or a drug user, it's easy to get into, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's, it's on the NHS, you can get treated. Gamblers are a lot harder, and it's not if it's being recognised. But the thing about it is, we got to, why have we just got to wait because it's too late? Yeah. Why have we got to wait until, do you know what, there's been a few like yeah. suicides linked to gambling, because yeah. they couldn't cope with the shame or whatever, or they've been hiding this secret. Why have we got to wait until this, to, to the worst things that happen before we act? Yeah, I guarantee, As you said, prevention is better than cure. I guarantee if you look on the statistics every year, a lot of the people who have committed suicide, there'll be a higher percentage. Oh uh, yeah, I 100% agree. Because I tell you, listen to me, I'll tell you some, some of my worst stories, man. Like, yeah. like I mean, I was, like me, like four, five o'clock in the morning, my underpants, betting on a, on a basketball game, yeah. uh, you know what I mean, like in my house, and cheering, because there's been a because there's been a three pointer, or like betting on a, on a on a tennis match in India. Uh, you know, what's all that about? At four or five o'clock in the morning, and then begging my, my friends to, to put three hundred quid into my account at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I mean, like obviously, like, I mean, like you know, this this is this this is the fact of it. Yeah. People and don't understand. They don't understand they that situation. They don't understand. The thing about it is, and a lot of people are going through it, and a lot of people in high profile are going through it as well because yeah. they've got they've got accessible to money and they've got and they've got time in their hands. Yeah, a lot of free time. A lot of free time. A lot of free time. You and know. Obviously, that's why it takes a lot of them a lot longer before they admit it. For me, like I always was managed was managing to get myself out of the trouble before I had to sort of admit it. Yeah. But when I lost my fight obviously it made me have that uh, consequence that made me want to admit it. But yeah. as a footballer or something, yeah. if you're on the underground a week and you spend your underground but then you know you've only got four days before you get another underground I bet you guarantee a lot of fighting around what you can pull or something to get you yeah, through that week. Yeah, yeah. And then carry on to do it again the next week. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still a problem, but it's just you're not noticing it because you're managing to uh, access funding again. You know what I mean? So, how, much, how much do you reckon that you've, you've spent on gambling? I mean, I wouldn't like to put a figure to it, but obviously I've, been, I've had inheritances. I've lost all my purses up to my 16 fight, sponsorship money. As a, poor, as a poor part figure? I'd say at least seven figures. Seven figures? Yeah. I spent over over 20 grand in two months. Yeah. I, I, spent, I, spent, I spent a lot of my big brother money. And I swear to God, I felt suicidal. Yeah. I felt like, do you know what, I can't do But then I thought myself, do you know what, I pulled myself out of it. But obviously, do you know what, not everyone can, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Not everyone can, and the thing is, I, mean, I think I'm over the worst now. But yeah. as you know, I just want to be there. I think that we should do something. Yeah, I, think, I think we should do something. But obviously, like, like you say, like, you don't realise, obviously, for me, when I was losing a lot of money, mm. it, I was managing quick, quickly to have a turnaround of excessive money. That's why, as well, again, like when I lost, I got hit my lowest point and lost everything and lost my fighting boxing. I I could turn my life around quicker than an average person could because I've got a talent and I, I as long as I've dedicated to myself and tried to sort my head out. Mm. Me, it's a harder problem when you're trying to sort your head out, but then you've got no chance of earning no other income. Yeah. And and even you when you're doing earn other income, you're only managing to pay your debts and cover your bills and you only hardly got any money to, to eat. That's so right. It's, it's a lot harder. So that's why these people are committing suicide and that's why I'm lucky and I'm blessed that I've been able to stay dedicated. I've been able to move my addiction and control them to be on the right things right now. And hopefully I'll keep pushing on my life. But as you say, we need to be able to organise our start something, get backers to be able to push for something to help these young children and to help um, people in life be able to get the knowledge earlier than what they're getting it so we can prevent the, the problems before we have to cure them. Listen, I think you know, during this lockdown, right, yeah, I think it's given, this is the right time to, to be doing something. Yeah. During this lockdown, it's given people a bit of a break. There's been no football, there's been no boxing. People have had a little two, three months break from gambling. Right? Gamblers haven't been able to gamble if they wanted to. So now football's coming back, boxing's coming back, all these sports are coming back, right? 
and I think now's the time to do something like that. People should talk about it more. Talk is key. Talk, talk about more, like what we're doing and stuff. And obviously, do you know what? Um, and 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 discuss. It's a it's a big issue. It's a big issue. It's a massive issue. And we can't sweep under the carpet no more. So as I said, you know what? As I said the kids the kids are doing it. It's just as, you know what? It's just as bad as it's just as bad as an issue as knife crime, as alcohol and drugs. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a so it's a social issue that we've got to address. And more people need to talk about it. So do you know what? My DMs are open. Your DMs are open, I'm sure. So do you know what? We need to like, if you want to discuss it, if you want some sort of support, if you want to, you know, if you're going through the same thing or you've been through it, yeah. um, talk. The thing is, you can talk to a therapist, but anyone who's trained to be a therapist, and obviously when they're trained at a high level, they're good at their job. But talk to someone who's actually gone through the experience and come out the other side. You get, a, it's a lot better than just talking to any average Joe therapist. A lot of therapists, the top therapists, have actually been uh, had alcohol um, addictions, drug addictions, or gambling addictions, and they've come through it, trained to be therapists, and and used that, and that's why they're, they're giving their knowledge. But obviously, the best best um, start of getting through the problem is going to the ga gambling anonymous meetings, alcohol anonymous meetings, drug anonymous meetings, because you're speaking with. You're in a group of people who are all like yourself, so you can all relate to each other and all help to use each other to improve yourself as a person and get over your problem. Do you know what, right? Yeah? I remember when I used to work in the bookies, right? Yeah. And I remember this guy came in, right? And he, he, he spent 20 grand in this two hours. And at the end of it, he was like, and then he was just betting, he was just betting on long shots. And then that's his last turn. And he came up to me, he goes to me, I goes, well, you right, mate? You know, you like to see, he goes to me, this is my last 10 pounds. I've lost my, I lost my, my, I lost my house. I've lost my family. I've lost everything. Yeah. And obviously I, I thought, no, that, that should be a lesson. But obviously, if you've got an addictive personality, you've got an addictive personality. Yeah. And you know what? And fact of the matter is, it's a, it's a risk and reward system that addicts look for. They want that, it's a reward thing, you know, they want that, they need that, that dopamine of a reward. That's why gambling is so addictive. Yeah. It makes you feel good when you win. Yeah. And obviously the more and more you do it, you, you lose that, you lose that, it, it gets desensitized. Yeah. So, do you know what I mean? Like people don't, it's like, it's like with any drug, do you know what I mean? It's you're, you're, you're chasing the high. And, and obviously, do you know what? Gambling is, is socially acceptable. It's socially acceptable. Like, look, it's everywhere. Yeah. Everyone's got apps, everyone's got ads advertising, everywhere is. And you know what? You know what the worst thing about it, which is sickening? They're starting to target kids now. On all these channels now, they're sponsored by Ladbrokes, Gist, that, Betfred, all these companies that are targeting, on YouTube, that are targeting kids. Now, now correct me if I'm wrong, right, yeah? I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong, because we're talking about the issues. Kids are, 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 are very, very like, sort of like, vulnerable. impressionable, yeah. they're vulnerable. We're supposed to protect them. Yeah. And, and, and yet, we're allowing these gambling companies to target the youths. Come on, mate, come on, that's wrong. That's wrong. And this, this, these are things that we got to talk about. We need to talk about this sort of stuff, do you know what I mean? Like, because I tell you what, man, until there's, there's a big, massive epidemic of kids killing themselves before we're going to do something about it. Yeah. I think we start talking about it now. Straight away. Straight away. I know, and I'll be up to, to doing some, some, some talks with you around the yeah, schools yeah. Uh, and, and, and the communities to talk about this. Because yeah. we've been through it. Yeah. And we've been and through it. Needs to, it should be making it accessible and make it, making it easy and putting ourselves out there to get uh, people in life as, as they should be trying their artists instead of having success stories in sport and then, and then um, suicide stories a few years after. Yeah. If, they had, if they would have had uh, prevention talks and uh, uh, advice talks while they were at school, they can, all they'd have to be trying to worry about was the success that is not hopefully worrying that they're going to now get the support, now they're a sports, now they're a big club, now they're a big athlete, hopefully their manager or their person will get them the right advice. Yeah, they should have had the advice before that. Gamblers always tell you when they when they win, they never tell you when they lose. And that's why, and, that's, and they're scared, people are scared to talk about it in case they, they get tarnished. Yeah, they're embarrassed. It's embarrassed, it's, embarrassed. it's a, a lot shame. Of people keep you while you're down. Yeah. And that's the worst feeling, because that just pushes you, pushes the addiction more, and makes you want to do it even more. 
so it's, a, it's about supporting people and, and trying to understand the people instead of kicking while they're down and not understanding and sort of trying to think like well, why can't you just stop it's like why can't an alcoholic just stop drinking because they can't why can't a drug user just stop using drugs they can't they still get cold turkey or, or gambling you still um, have nightmares with a gambling you still get mental health issues with a gambling so it's all the same it's, a, it's an illness it's not just a pick and choose thing if you, if you could just pick and choose to stop gambling all the addictive person people would, do it, would stop but it's an illness and all us people who have done it are definitely are ill mentally ill from it 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent. as i said it causes so many different issues so, um the, the depression the anxiety and all that sort of stuff but listen man i said i take my hat off to you and hopefully this can be a thing now where we can talk about it. Listen, we, can, we should we should listen to it. We should be talking about all this sort of stuff, all these things. Anybody out there with a who wants to who wants to discuss something like this, get in touch. Come and be on the TV, talk about it. Do you know what? Because you know what, you can't you can't live this fake. It's fake social media lifestyle yeah. no more. It's all about, oh yeah, my highlight reel. Oh, my life is great. My life is perfect. It's a lie. You're living a lie. And, you're, and all your followers are, are, are believing your, 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 your lies. So if you just be honest with yourself, right? I was on Judge Rinder, and I didn't address it, and I didn't say it, and, I, and that's one of my regrets. But you know what? Better late than never. And so, you know, it's all right to make out that, you're, that you're, everything's hunky-dory, when in fact it ain't. And you, and you and you got shit. Everyone's got shit. But listen, it's talk about. It. Don't hold it. Yeah. If you hold it in, it's going to make yeah, it worse. Work. Ten times worse. It's going to make it ten times worse. It, yeah. Deal with it. Yeah, the quicker you express it, the quicker it can be dealt with. Boom it, T V.